the black sheep. I have one here that's called. Just this microphone. Um, has anyone heard? Or let me say the name. Username uh, X Rome X. X Land. X X X. Uh, this is gonna get weird. The first part is weird. Oh. Okay. Um, has anyone heard of this cooking show? Is what it's called. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the one that I was interested in reading. That's right. You get eleven discs for only three payments of thirty nine ninety nine. And I was like, Jason, you're such a. It's better than a flat iron. Oh fuck yeah, yeah, just like that, baby. <laughs> <laughs> With a deep sigh, I chucked the remote to the side, dragging a hand over my face. I'd been channel surfing for hours, constantly getting lost in tide pools of infomercials and heavily censored porn. It shouldn't have been a surprise. Late night television fucking sucked. My eyes stung from the flickering fluorescent light of the TV and my bone-deep fatigue. Insomnia was a huge bitch, leaving you with only enough brain power to process moving images. I remember when I was little, my mother, my mother would warn me not to spend too much time in front of the TV, lest I wanted my eyes to turn square. I used to laugh back then, but now I'm not so sure she was just messing with me. I felt bloated and not hungry at all, but I still peeled my body off the couch to get some snacks. I wanted to eat simply because I was bored out of my mind. Unfortunately for me, there was nothing much in my cabinets. I desperately needed to go grocery shopping, but I kept putting it off due to laziness. At least I was losing some weight from eating less, something that people like to comment on. Exercise wasn't an option for me. Given that I was always exhausted, I worked from home and spent a lot of time staring at my apartment walls. My life was kind of miserable, but I didn't have the energy to think much about it. I didn't have enough reminders, or I had had enough reminders from my family. I found a box of stale crackers and brought them back to the living room, sinking, sinking down on the couch once again. My tailbone hurt from hours of inactivity, my whole body did actually, which made me feel 15 years older than I actually was. Stuffing a couple of crackers into my mouth, I dejectedly grabbed the remote and clicked the channel button again and again and again. Life had lost all meaning. Then finally, there seemed to be something different. I stopped at what seemed to be the beginning of a cooking show. The intro was playing, showcasing various dishes that I'd ever seen before, that I'd never seen before, along with a catchy tune. The title flashed on the screen in an elegant lettering, The Midnight Ambrosial. The set was expensive looking, with the latest gadgets like an, an enviable, enviable, oh, enviable stainless steel fridge and a very advanced microwave. Metallic surfaces glinted, and even the knives on the wall rack above the stove, like they'd been meticulously polished, all looked so clean, like you could eat from the floor. The hostess walked in, smiling broadly at the camera. She was the barefoot Contessa. She was the barefoot Contessa and Paula Deen type, motherly but also kinda off. They all had a bit of unhingedness in their eyes, holding it at bay until a couple of glasses of wine with their cooking got the best of them. The only difference was that she wore incredibly elegant, outdated clothing, like she was attending a ball in some far faraway castle and not preparing a meal. She also wore expensive jewelry, everywhere except her hands. I felt inadequate just looking at her in my boxers and an old, pit-stained t-shirt. Welcome, everybody, to the Midnight Ambrosial, she said, her voice kind of breathy and low, almost like it was meant to be seductive. My name is Adeline. And I am so glad you tuned into the show tonight. You're in for a treat. There was no windows on the set, so I couldn't tell if this was live or pre-recorded. I highly doubted any cooking show would be filming so late at night, so it had to be the latter. It also seemed perfectly orchestrated, which is hard to pull off on live television. Still, I'd never even heard of this show before, which made it even more interesting. Involuntarily, I found myself leaning forward a bit, captivated by it all. I thought we'd prepare something special for tonight. I've been thinking about it for days now, Adeline continued, wiping the corner of her lips as if to emphasize her point. She walked over to the fridge and pulls out a meat package, wrapped up neatly in butcher paper. I managed to get my hands on this really nice cut of long pig, a juicy loin. Long pig? I frowned, trying to think of where I'd heard that before. I reached into my pocket for my phone to Google it but then realized I'd left it charging in my bedroom. It sounded fancy, and my knowledge of fancy food was practically non-existent. 
I figured maybe I could learn a thing or two for the next time I went to the supermarket. I scrambled for a pen and a piece of paper as Adeline continued, hooked on her every word. We're going to roast this with some red wine and mushrooms. Hmm. It's going to be so tender and flavorful, I can already taste it. She unwrapped the pack, revealing the meat cut. For a moment, she stared at it, almost as if transfixed for her eyes, glazed over and her mouth slightly open. The camera zoomed in, showing the cut in greater detail. The meat seemed a little darker, and the cuts of pork I'd seen with a slight purplish hue. The image was so clear it felt like I could reach out and touch it, squishy and cold, faintly perfuming the air and metal in slightly earthy rawness. I reached for another handful of crackers. Adeline finally stopped staring and went to get a bottle of wine from a nearby side table. The camera went back to its original place showing the kitchen once more and Adeline uncorked the wine. She poured herself a glass and took a long sip. Here we go, I thought. Ah, and before I forget, we actually have a very special guest on the show tonight. Here's a dear friend of mine, and a man of great taste, who also loves to cook. Adeline smiled, smiled broadening. It almost was too large for her to fit her face. Welcome, dear Absalon. The camera suddenly went to the other side of the set, and was, wasn't visible before. A table had been set for two, decorated extravagantly enough to be fit for royalty. Faces overflowing with exotic flowers, candles dripping wax on silver candelera, candelabra, and even ruby red pomegranates. A man sitting on one of the chairs, delighted smile on his face as he nodded at the camera. Absalon was strikingly handsome, so perfectly symmetrical and aesthetically pleasing that it was unnerving. I couldn't look at his face directly. His clothes were also quite extravagant, matching Adeline's style perfectly. He said nothing to her greeting, simply staring at the camera, through it, I'd even say. For a couple more uncomfortable seconds, as soon as the camera turned to Adeline, I found that I could breathe much easier. As she started with the cooking instructions, I heard her take notes, entranced by both her husky voice and the inherent deliciousness of the dish she was making. She described the smells and textures of the ingredients in great detail, the camera zooming in each of them. And I gushed over the greatness of the recipe. At one point, she even seemed to have there to restrain herself from eating it. It was only halfway done, but her jittery anticipation was contagious. She even burned her hand on the pan as she seared the meat, fingers shaking as she tightly gripped the handle. If she was in any pain, she didn't show it. Her breathing was shallow, though, and her eyes wide. I was on the edge of my seat. My writing became nearly illegible from trying to keep up, and suddenly the ink smeared as a drop of liquid fell onto the piece of paper. When I felt another string rolling off the bottom of my lip, I realized I was drooling, intensely. My stomach no longer felt bloated, but instead achingly empty and a void waiting to be filled. I felt like I was, I had little control over my body, hypnotized by this strange show and even stranger hostess. All I knew was that this sudden craving, this gnawing hunger, it was almost revitalizing, making me forget my insomnia and it, instead urging me to feed. Was the supermarket even open at hours like this? I felt a great urge to grab my car keys and find out. On the screen, Adeline pulled the steaming bacon pan out of the oven and uncovered it. The sight of it, juicy golden brown meat swimming in dark, slightly crimson sauce, nearly sent me into a frenzy. All I could do was shove more crackers into my gaping, wet maw. At least I was salivating so much I wouldn't choke on them. Adeline moaned as she cut into it, which made me jolt. My, my, this looks so delectable. I can barely keep from sinking my teeth into it. She joked, but her laugh sounded wrong, forced, with a strange growl in her throat. You must try this at home. It's a high-quality meat. Once you get a taste of the long pig, you'll never want to try anything else. I believed her. I had never wanted something more in my stupid, pathetic life. Not even happiness. Not even a good night's sleep. How could I have ever deprived myself of the pleasure of eating? It was torture. Adeline served two portions and brought the plates over to the table where Absalon looked com looked positively ravenous. Even while he still smiled, that same smile. And if you don't know where to find some long pig, well, you could always ask a friend, she said cheerily, pouring two glasses of wine. We hope you tune in again soon. We will still have plenty more recipes to try. She sat down across from him, 
they clinked glasses together, then the camera once more focused solely on Absalon. So close I could see that he was practically poreless and blemishless, entirely too perfect. He raised his glass as a toast to the audience, his expression unchanging. And so, the great serpent devours itself once more, he said, his voice deep and hoarse and unearthly, rattling my very bones. There was a wet slurping noise, and then the camera was pointed to Adeline once more. I saw that she was tearing into her meat like a wild beast. The dark sauce trickled on her chin and her fingers. Absalon, on the other hand, remained civilized, cutting his meat carefully before bringing a small piece to his mouth. And me. I remained transfixed as the camera pulled out and out and out. Revealing more of the set, the sounds of eating continued, impossibly loud in my ears. It was then... I noticed that Absalon was sitting on a wheelchair and that while I could see Adeline's feet under the tablecloth, I could not see his. My stomach rumbled ferociously. And that's the end. What? <laughs> that one's pretty weird, right? I... So... <laughs> I'm just confused. I have so many questions. What? Why don't you get it? I mean, you get it, right? So what are they eating? I mean, they're eating Absalom's freaking legs, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they call it long pig? I don't know. I don't know what long pig means. Anymore.